Hello and welcome back to Bookish and uh, welcome to a video that you know the inspiration for which just came to me uh, just well this morning that's kind of why I'm late getting my Thursday video up and it was inspired by the video I did on Tuesday which was a tag video uh, in which I talked about my favorite author and in making that uh, video I kind of uh, had a cop-out way of coming up with my favorite author I thought uh, so I didn't have to decide between you know Balzac or or Faulkner or Toni Morrison uh, I just went by number of books uh, and this is something I hadn't thought about very often how many books by various authors have I read and then kind of maybe what that says about my reading history um, and maybe you know be, can be suggestive of things that I might want to uh, think about reading more of in the future. So I just went with and I just got up this morning uh, and counted uh, the books by various authors on my shelves that I had actually read. Not that I own because I own a fair few more uh, Balzac novels than, uh, than you know, the number of Balzac novels I own is, is larger than the number of Balzac novels I read. But I just thought, you know, I'll get up and I'll make a video, you know, about this. So I counted uh, and I came up with 11 authors who have read the most. The reason why it's 11 and not 10, you know, traditional top 10 list thing. The reason why it's 11 and not 10 is there is a tie for spot number 10. So with uh, no further ado, uh, the uh, author I've read the 10th most books is Toni Morrison and that number is 8. Toni Morrison, uh, the American novelist who uh, won the Nobel Prize. Toni Morrison, the author of what I increasingly think is probably the best American novel ever written. Uh, beloved uh, Toni Morrison, who I am involved in a project this year to read all of Toni Morrison's uh, novels, which is one reason why she is uh, on this list, uh, because I think I've read uh, three, four novels of hers uh, this year that I hadn't read before to bring my total number to eight. The great uh, Toni Morrison is uh, tied for number 10. She is tied <coughs> with John Updike. Now, John Updike today is a novel, is a novelist, is a writer uh, for whom I, I don't necessarily have um, a lot of respect. Uh, but there was a time in which I read um, uh, John Updike novels somewhat obsessively, and my total number of Updike novels I've read, I believe, is eight, uh, which puts him in a tie for 10th place uh, with Toni Morrison. Uh, I will say that. You know, if you've never read John Updike and you're thinking of reading John Updike, probably Rabbit Run is where you should start. Uh, the Rabbit books are Updike's uh, most famous uh, series of books. They're the things that kind of made him, I think, uh, gave him the reputation that he had. They are the chronicles of a, uh, of a white man struggling to make money, struggling with marriage, struggling with his own um, kind of sexual promiscuity and as such they are kind of an internal looking uh, series of novels about the problems of a white guy uh, at various points uh, in his life. Uh, the next novelist on the list is also one which I have to say that I was somewhat surprised or the next writer on the list I have to say I'm somewhat surprised to find here and that is Stephen R. Donaldson the fantasy writer who uh, really I think was probably most famous in the 1970s and 80s for his uh, Thomas Covenant, uh, The Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, uh, part one and two, and I think he did a part three as well. Thomas Covenant uh, was a modern day, for the time period the novels were written, uh, American writer who had caught leprosy and his wife had left him, and he is uh, magically transported uh, to uh, another world where his wedding ring and who he is gives him power, which he is really reluctant to, to wield. I read the first two Chronicles of Thomas Covenant uh, series. That's six books. I read uh, the two huge novels that he came out with in the 1980s. Uh, A Man Rides Through and, I don't know, I want to say A Distant Mirror, which I'll be honest with you, I remember no, almost nothing of. Uh, and then I read a book of uh, his short stories, which were truly egregious. And you know, I don't, I'm not normally embarrassed uh, by the writers I've read. I'm not normally necessarily impressed by the writers I've read either, but if there's one on this list who, you know, surprised me, and I don't think, uh, with the exception of doing, uh, participating in a read-along um, uh, with Steve Donahue of the Chronicles of Thomas Covenant uh, last year, which I finked out on after three books, I don't think I would ever go back uh, and read these books. Uh, Donaldson is, is not a particularly good writer unless he's writing about an action sequence 
or a battle, and that really isn't enough. So, But, you know, there are nine books there. So there's Stephen Donaldson. Uh, also with nine books on my list is the Irish crime novelist uh, Ian Rankin. Uh, you know, for somebody, and I oftentimes say this, I don't read a lot of genre fiction. I notice that there are three uh, genre writers on my list, uh, top 10, top 11 list, and Ian Rankin is definitely one of those. Rankin's uh, Inspector Rebus novels are just the kind of crime novel I like. I like Inspector Rebus as kind of, you know, uh, hard drinking, down on his luck, rule violating, effective policeman solving crimes in Scotland, and who doesn't think, you know, crime novels set in Scotland are great. I won't lie to you, part of it, uh, what I like about them. Uh, novels is the setting uh, that they're set for the most part in Scotland. I like that a lot. The next novelist on my, or next writer on my uh, top 10 list also uh, a crime novelist and that is the English crime novelist P.D. James. Um, I've read 10 books by P.D. James. Um, almost all of them are a part of her uh, Adam Dalgleish detective or chief inspector Adam Dalgleish novels. Dalgleish is a poet and a crime solver uh, who solves oftentimes really heinous crimes uh, taking place uh, for the most part in the English countryside. And I've enjoyed P.D. James's uh, detective novels a great deal. And Adam Dalgleish was one of those detectives I really liked. Uh, also, uh, at number 10 is the uh, American writer uh, Thomas Boyd. Thomas Boyd, the author of, uh, you know, probably the most important American World War I novel uh, was a writing project and a research project of mine for a really long period of time. And as a part of that, I read all 10 of his books. Uh, that includes uh, nine novels and a book of uh, short stories. I've also read a lot of his unpublished short stories as well. Uh, he is an American writer that is very, uh, not very well known today, uh, but I think he deserves to be uh, much better known. And at one time, I did a lot of research and reading with Thomas Boyd. So also on my list of uh, writers I've read the most at number 10 is Honoré de Balzac. Uh, Balzac, uh, the writer whose picture appears as my avatar, uh, is absolutely one of my favorite writers. And even the worst book by him I've read, The Wild Asses Skin, uh, is a great book and I find his work delightful. And I think, uh, I, I'm not exactly sure how I got into reading. Um, Balzac, I know that The Wrong Side of Paris was the first Balzac novel I read. I believe the introduction to that novel was by Adam Gopnik. Uh, and I think I had just read Adam Got Gopnik's uh, kind of memoir of he and his family's life in Paris called Paris to the Moon. And I think that's where I got the idea to read Balzac. Uh, but uh, thank goodness I did because uh, I love the man's work and uh, can have lots of Balzac on my shelf that I still need to read and I'm looking forward to getting to that. At uh, the next spot on my list uh, is Ernest Hemingway. I've read 12 uh, books by Hemingway, including um, all of his novels that were mostly completed during his lifetime. I have not read True at First Light, and I think there was another posthumous one. I did read um, Islands in the Stream, uh, part of which was, po was completed posthumously, and part of which he had pretty much um, in, in, in ready to go before he died. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've mentioned before that The Sun Also Rises is probably, matter of fact, I said The Sun Also Rises is my favorite book, uh, not the best book, but my favorite book because of what it means to me personally. And I did read, as a Hemingway fanboy, everything, including uh, Death in the Afternoon, and I think all but about three or four of Hemingway's short stories um, uh, I think I've read pretty much everything uh, there is to read that he published uh, as fiction. Um, I have both versions of A Movable Feast, the original, and then the revised version of his kind of memoir of his life in Paris. And I was, you know, a real Hemingway fan, so it didn't surprise me to find that Hemingway was on the list at 12. I was a little bit more surprised by um, the next uh, writer uh, who is tied with Hemingway, who I've read 12 books by, and that is uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Uh, Marquez, most famously the author of 100 Years of Solitude and Love in the Time of Cholera, became a real obsession of mine. Uh, when I was in college, a friend of mine introduced me to 100 Years of Solitude, and I think he and I, uh, we didn't know this was what it was called, but he and I more or less buddy read our way through a lot of Marquez's uh, novels and works um, when we were in college, uh, and uh, I 
you know, in the 90s, every time he came out with something new, a book of short stories, uh, a memoir or something like that, I, I bought it uh, and read it. Uh, I probably own more books in hardcover by Gabriel Garcia Marquez than any other writer uh, as a result of that. Um, and I would recommend that anybody read uh, 100 Years of Solitude. I think it's just uh, a great book. Uh, on the list next is William Faulkner. I've read 14 of Faulkner's novels. Uh, I have three on the shelf that I have not read, but I've read 14 of those novels, uh, of his novels, and as you know, I, I am a lover of the work of William Faulkner, um, and uh, every year, uh, Alan from Big Hard Books and I, uh, Big Hard Books and Classics and I, along this year with uh, Una and Crypto from the Codex Cantina, host of Faulkner in August, uh, the first two years uh, were light in August, and then this year was um, The Sound of the Fury, and next year we are reading Faulkner's Sanctuary, uh, which is a lot easier in its construction, a lot less experimental uh, in its writing, uh, but <clears throat> also a lot more disturbing in its content. But we'll be reading that next year, and I, <clears throat> I have expressed many times that I have a real, true uh, love for the work of Faulkner, uh, and... Uh, in part, I think, because I am uh, consider myself to be a Southerner uh, and taking that on with all the horrific baggage it comes with, uh, I think Faulkner's novels uh, speak to me on that level. And then, <clears throat> where I started this whole project off, I've read 21 novels by uh, Patrick O'Brien. They are all part of the Aubrey Maturin uh, series of novels, seafaring novels set in the British Navy in the late 18th, early 19th century, and uh, I just love all those books in a series, and so again, it kind of flies in the face of the idea that I don't, uh, that I, I'm not really a genre uh, fiction reader. Uh, you know, obviously I do uh, like genre fiction from time to time. So then in just looking at those, at the authors who I've read the most books by, there are only two authors of color on my list, Toni Morrison and Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Uh, there are only four authors on the list who are not Americans. Uh, Marquez, uh, Rankin, uh, Balzac, and Patrick O'Brien uh, are not Americans, uh, and there are only two uh, women on my list, Toni Morrison and, and P.D. James. Um, there are two other writers who almost made the list, and that's William Trevor and uh, Cormac McCarthy. Anyway, I don't know if you've ever done this with your books, counted up, you know, what author you've read the most books by. Uh, but if you have, I'd love to like, you know, know which author you've read the most in the comment section below. Sorry for the dogs barking. As always, thank you for watching.